A couple of people in the comments recently have been asking for a video on HF Air Radio and Volmex and the like, so I thought I'd have a listen round, make a few recordings and show you the sort of HF Air related signals you can receive on your shortwave radio. I'll then tell you what they do and where they come from. It's not going to be an overcomplicated overload of information, just a way of inspiring you to pick up the shortwave radio and take a listen. So first let's look at Volmets. You may think that Volmet is an acronym for something, but the word is in fact derived from two French words, vol meaning flight and meteo meaning weather or weather report. Put them together and you have flight weather report, and that is exactly what a Volmet is. The purpose of a Volmet broadcast is to provide weather information to aircraft in flight. Pilots on international routes use these transmissions to avoid storms and turbulence and determine which procedures to use for landing. These transmissions are a great way for us to gauge propagation as they're a 24 hour signal. Volmet reports are mainly broadcast on HF frequencies from a number of civilian and military stations located around the world. In some regions such as Europe, there are also a number of stations which provide Volmet broadcasts on VHF. The global network is divided into separate regions, with each one having a number of Volmet stations which all broadcast on the same frequencies. Individual Volmets in each region broadcast weather reports for specific groups of air terminals in their region at specific times. Their transmission schedules are coordinated so they don't interfere with each other. Schedules are set at 5 minute intervals, with one Volmet in each region broadcasting reports for a fixed list of cities in each interval. These schedules repeat every hour. Volmets use automated voices to broadcast TAF, SIGMET and meteorological terminal air report information for a published list of airfields. With the increasing use of SATCOM and Datalink equipment such as ACARS, the reliance on Volmet is rapidly declining. Many Volmets have closed in recent years and this will likely continue as time goes on, although Volmet will certainly be around for the next few years at least. So I sat down at the radio for a couple of hours one evening last November and this is a selection of the Volmets I picked up using an ICOM 7300 and a long wire antenna. You're likely to hear lots of interesting information and terminology on a Volmet broadcast. The airport and time of last observation are given, then the wind speed and direction, the visibility, cloud which can include the type, temperature, dew point and sometimes the term no sig, meaning no significant change. The most impressive one for me was the Australian Volmet at Alice Springs in Australia. The official name for this one is Australian and its call sign is Victor Kilo Alpha 930. I received the signal from the 1 kilowatt transmitter on 6676 kHz, which is quite incredible. The transmitter site is located here between Alice Springs Airport and Finker Airfield in Australia's Northern Territory. Although you can barely see it, it's definitely there. Next is the Gander Volmet over in Canada. The official name for this one is Gander and the call sign is Victor Foxtrot Golf. The signal came in nicely on 6604 kHz from this transmitter site around 5 miles to the west of Gander Airport. Ceiling 1-1000 broken. From 0 0 0 Zulu, wind 240 degrees, 7 knots, visibility 5 miles, light snow showers, 700 scattered, ceiling 7000 over. Probability 30%. 0300 Zulu until I also received a Gander Volmet transmission on 10051 kHz too. They both transmit using 5 kilowatts or less. Over to Russia now and Novosibirsk Volmet on 8 kHz. 
This one transmits less than 5 kilowatts from a compound around 1.5 miles off the western edge of Novosibirsk Tolmachevo Airport in Siberia. <laughs> Its official name is Novosibirsk, and its call sign is United November November November. Staying in Russia, I came across the Rostov Volmet on 8939 kHz. Its official name is Rostov and its call sign is Romeo Lima Alpha Papa. This one uses a 2 kW transmitter located in this small compound on the southern edge of the Rostov on Don airport in Rostov Oblast. <laughs> Moving a bit closer to home now, and Military One, the Royal Air Force's Volmet transmitting from St. Evil in Cornwall. I received it nicely on 5450 kHz. 10 kilometers or more cloud, 2,000 feet, scattered 3,500 feet, temperature 8, 2. Call sign Mike Kilo Lima, the signal emanates from the former RAF St. Evil, which is now home to a high frequency transmitter station, forming part of the Defence High Frequency Communications Service. The station is operated by Babcock International Group on behalf of the Ministry of Defence. And finally over to Shannon in Ireland, and the Shannon Volmet, callsign Echo India Papa. This is probably the easiest to receive, and the most abundant Volmet you can hear in the UK. The signals emanate from 5 kilowatt transmitters from a radio station around 3 miles to the north of Shannon Airport in Ireland. It was a strong signal on 4 frequencies during my evening of listening. 2,300 feet, 2 towering cumulus at height unknown. Temperature 11 point 7 QMH 1006 low state. Cologne bomb metroport. Cologne bomb at 2220 Zulu. Automated observation. Winds 290 degrees 14. Visibility 4000 meters fog patches. Metroport. So that's a selection of Volmets. Let's look at a small range of HF air traffic control transmissions. This is a vast subject and would probably need a whole series to cover, so I'll just explain some of the signals I heard to give you an idea of what you can hear, what they do, and where they're coming from. The world is divided into air traffic control zones. These zones are controlled by control centres, which operate mostly on HF, although there are VHF and satellite frequencies in use too. As an example, the Atlantic is divided into north and south sectors. Each sector is then divided further. While I carry on, I'll show you how the North Atlantic is divided, and which air traffic radio service falls into which sector, and what frequencies they use. Look out for Shanwick in these charts and also keep an eye out for Santa Maria, as we'll come to that soon. Shanwick Radio provides a long-range communication service for oceanic air traffic control in the eastern half of the North Atlantic. The Oceanic Air Traffic Control Centre is located at Prestwick in Scotland, hence the name Shanwick, an amalgamation of Shannon and Prestwick. Known correctly as Shannon Air Radio Ballygarreen, it transmits from the same site as the Volmet we covered earlier, near Erlan Moor in County Clare. It keeps in contact with all flights in oceanic airspace, mainly using HF radio. It originated from the days of the Foynes Flying Boat Base on the River Shannon in the 1930s. Now Ballygarine maintains contact with all flights in the oceanic airspace using over 20 HF frequencies, VHF frequencies and satellite communications. 
at peak times it handles in excess of 1500 aircraft in a 24 hour period. Here's Shadwick coming in on 6547 kHz. 334 Shadwick Radio, good day. Uh, confirm uh, Gander is your next area, is that correct? Thank you, Airplane 334 Shadwick. Secondary HF with Shadwick. 8879er at 30 West. 30 West, contact Gander. Here's another clip on 6595 kHz. In this clip, back on 6547 kHz, you'll hear an interesting sound. Cell call check coming up now. If you missed it, here it is again. And again. That was cell call or selective calling. It's a signalling system used in conjunction with HF radio communications. It's used to alert pilots communicating with air traffic control of an incoming message on HF. Each aircraft is assigned a four letter cell call code and cell call equipment on board the aircraft monitors the HF radios for incoming signals. An audible tone is generated in the cockpit when the incoming signal matches the cell call code. The main purpose of this is to avoid the pilot having to constantly listen on the HF radios to monitor for incoming calls. A cell call code is made up of two pairs of letters and follows these rules. Santa Maria Oceanic Control is another North Atlantic air traffic service. It lies on the key routes of most of the flights from Europe to Central and South America. It can be heard here transmitting from the Azores on 8906 kHz. This is Mumbai Radio, India's version of Shanwick Radio. Also known as Bombay Radio, it works within the South Asian and Indian Ocean World Air Traffic Zones. You'll often hear controllers talking to pilots and sending cell call signals. I received it quite weak here in the UK, but it was there on 8879 kHz. Many pilots report that Mumbai Radio's controllers are notorious for talking fast and then getting annoyed when pilots don't understand them. Let me know if you've heard instances of this in the comments below. And finally, I thought I'd include one more example that sounds like Volmet but actually isn't. This is Chesapeake HF station, call sign November Mike November. The US Coast Guard broadcasts National Weather Service high seas forecast and storm warnings from six high seas communication stations, and this is a broadcast on 8765 kHz from Chesapeake. The station uses a synthesized voice known as Iron Mike, which is very distinctive and serves as an aid in identifying and copying these weather broadcasts. So that's an overview of some of the HF air transmissions, and one exception you can hear on quite a simple setup a shortwave radio and a wire antenna. There is, of course, much more out there, so let us know your favourites in the comments below. Scattered 3,500 feet, temperature 8, dew point 6, 
QMH1012. Lincoln at 1350 in 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Visibility 100 kilometers in all cloud. 2700 feet. Broken 3000 feet. Temperature 8. Dew point 7. QMH1012. Temper.